Hello, hi guys. Um, today we're we'll looking at a refrigeration process uh, or refrigerator. Uh, this is a power machine N6. Right? So this is one of uh, the slightly complex um, question of uh, or topic of power machine N6. Okay. So uh, what is happening on refrigeration? Uh, refrigeration has uh, four components. So it's built with the four components. Uh, and the first one, we were looking at the compressor. Number two is the uh, condenser, the throttling valve, and uh, the evaporator. So what is happening here is that a refrigerant, uh, which is um, uh, the the, the sort of liquid that it's flowing uh, through the system of uh, the refrigerate uh, of the refrigeration so um, what is happening here is that uh, from the first one or oh, okay let's start from here so um the uh, the refrigerant here it's uh, is in the form of liquid so if it's in a form of liquid and then it flows to uh, the evaporator so the evaporator will be heating uh, this liquid uh, into uh, a dry uh, saturated uh, vapor so that will flow into the compressor and then from the compressor to the condenser the condenser this one is designed to lower uh, because here uh, the, this one will gain um, this steam will gain uh, heat energy you know? And then when it gains heat energy, uh, the compressor is there to compress or to to add more heat energy on uh, on the on 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 your on your vapor, you know, or which is your refrigerant. And then from there, it will be flowed through the condenser, and then the condenser is to um, is there to compress uh, to to minimize no? to minimize your uh, your heat energy or to lower down your heat energy we know what this condensation means so that means here the uh, this uh, this liquid or this refrigerant will be flowing in uh, a form of uh, vapor which will be a, a sort of air and then here it will uh, condensate that means it will be turning into water and then for all oh, liquid not water because it's a refrigerant uh, so it will be turning into liquid here and then from this point that means it's going to your throttling valve and then your throttling valve is already in liquid from this point okay <sighs> sorry <clears throat> yeah and then from here is flowing to the uh, to the evaporator and then the evaporator heat uh, this liquid and then it evaporates the liquid uh, into a dry, uh, dry saturated vapor when it enters the compressor. So this cycle will continue like that uh, throughout the refrigerant. So that means here, what you have to keep in mind is that uh, the mass of uh, this refrigerant will be kept constant, and also the um, and also this uh it's going in uh in uh, a process of an iso uh tropic uh, isotropical process therefore that means uh, your uh, also your 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 volume of this um uh, of this refrigerant is kept constant now so this volume will affect the formula of uh the um, of 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 our entropy right so and then uh, we also have uh, these two diagrams here so on 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 these two diagrams we have uh, the temperature entropy diagram and we also have the pressure enthalpy diagram so on this one you have the pressures in this point and then this side you have the uh, enthalpy so your enthalpy it's your h num and then from this side you have your temperature and your entropy so your entropy is represented by um by s so what is happening now from when you enter from the compressor to the condensator uh that means you on your point number one so on point number one uh it's when 
uh, you increase the temperature from this point you have temperature number one and then you increase your temperature to temperature number two but then the entropy is still our main constant that means uh, when when the refrigerant uh, the refrigerant enter the compressor uh, it will uh, the compressor will increase the temperature of the refrigerant the temperature that is coming from evaporator that means will be increased uh, at this point so at this point now um, is also the same point from here that means the enthalpy or the heat energy from uh, pressure number one uh, will be increased to uh, pressure number two so this is the uh, also the uh, the heat energy that means it will increase from one to two from this point so another thing is that uh, uh, a, a refrigerant is also using the uh, the process of uh, or refrigeration it's also using the process of um, let's say the process of what you call um, heat uh, of heat uh, what you call okay for so, uh, heat now so remember we have the law of conversation of heat so where they say that the heat energy that it's lost by an object is also equals to the heat energy that uh, will be gained by an object but this is under normal circumstances so this is the laws of thermodynamics on the laws of thermodynamics we know that uh, the body that has uh, the higher temperature will trans will transfer its heat energy to the body that has the lower temperature so but then now uh, under refrigeration uh, is that we're going to reverse the process because now we wanted to uh, to lower down the uh, the heat energy on a higher body temperature it's like when you you it's like when you take uh, a bottle of water uh maybe at 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 12 degrees Celsius and then you put it on your fridge at home and then it will come um maybe after some few hours the temperature of this water will low will be dropped by maybe say it's going to become up as two uh degrees Celsius. So this is what is happening here. So by then uh if we want to convect water or a body with a high temperature to a lower temperature it's when we need some external uh, heat energy that means we need to add some more heat and uh, heat energy not some more but then we need uh, to add another you know because it that it won't happen naturally from this point then from here for that we lost uh, it will cause to the gain heat energy yeah? but then now uh, you have to add um, uh, an external force let's say it's an external force which is going to be that heat um, that the processor uh, that processor that is the one that it's adding the heat that we need so that means from this point to this one is the external heat energy that we need to uh to lower down the temperature of that body and then and then uh, we also move to the condenser. So when it moves to the condenser, now from this point to point number three, it lowers the temperature. So when it lowers the temperature, it decreases also the uh, the uh, the entropy. So from point number three to four, now at um, it's also uh, the the temperature is, is the same. And then but these uh, these two diagrams uh they work hand in hand yeah? so because when you move from two to this point which is number three the pressure remain constant from two to three and then uh if the pressure remain constant it will this pressure will remain constant up until to number five and then from this point is where it happens here at the condenser so from the condenser at uh, this one it's it will losing the heat energy here uh, that's why the temperature will drop from this point and then after the year you will be moving to this point of what of your um of your throttling valve and then from the throttling is already uh this one is already will be liquid at this point 
So from four to five, this is the process that is undergoing uh, refrigeration. So if it's undergoing refrigeration, that means it's losing uh, all the heat energy that it has. That's why it ended up uh, here on the entropy. This is the smallest one compared to this one. And then from this point, now we'll be moving to the heat uh, to the evaporator. And then the evaporator is number six. And then when you're looking at here, it's now increasing the pressure from five. Sorry, yeah, uh, the pressure will be dropping from five to uh, six. No? But then the enthalpy is then the same. So this enthalpy, um, when it comes here, it will be the enthalpy of evaporation, which is HF, uh, which is the, um, is, uh, the latent heat energy. Right. And then from um, this point, we say that this one from one to two is the external heat energy that is uh, what we need. And then from this point to this one, uh, or six and one, this is the refrigeration effect. Because the refrigeration effect is given from the evaporator to the compressor. Yeah? So from this point, it's now on point number six. To, uh, and then the uh, point number six has been heated this uh, this liquid and then it will turn into evaporation but um, at this point so that will go to the compressor from here the uh, the system uh, start again that means it's uh, the compressor will be adding another heat energy this is our external because of the compressor it add, it gives us that uh, work done or that external force to move this uh, uh, this liquid enthalpy. And then um, what? Uh, let's do our calculation. What is important here? It's your uh, what you call uh, your coefficient of operation. So the coefficient of operation is actually uh, it's actually like uh, the um, what you call it's like your efficiency. Your efficiency, we know that efficiency is always the output uh, output over the input. No? Input multiplied by 100. But then uh, this one uh, is always uh, less than 100. But then the coefficient of um, performance, the coefficient of performance is not multiplied by 100, but it's also using uh, this form. Because this one is our refrigeration effect, that means it's our output energy um, that is given by the, so this is the output here, no? which is the entropy. Or else uh, we can looking we can look it uh, at this point, the enthalpy, yeah. So this is the output, but then this is the input, uh, which is the one that was given by the external force of what of the compressor no? and then uh, this is the external so therefore now to get the um, the heat energy or the coefficient of um, of performance we can then say the, uh, the coefficient uh, the refrigeration effect is h1 minus h number uh, six so from this point to this one so it's h1 minus h6 so the change here it's close to the refrigeration effect. So you can say that this one is a the refrigeration effect. Uh, yeah, from this point. And then uh, from this point and this one, this one is your external. So you can say that is divided by um, H2 minus H1, right? So this is your external. And then you'll get your coefficient of uh, performance. Uh, remember this one is not an ideal uh, it's not an ideal refrigeration effect so if you have an ideal refrigeration effect now it's your coefficient of uh, performance would be different it will be t uh, it's like t1 over t1 plus t2 so this is uh, as an ideal um, coefficient of um, performance of the uh, refrigeration so then uh, now uh, let's uh, talk about our enthalpy now uh, in order for us to get h1 h2 h3 and uh, and so on so what is happening here 
uh, is that you're going to looking at the um, heat energy so like i was saying that uh, at, at, uh, when you have heat energy uh, with maybe this is the total heat energy will be equals to the heat energy plus the other one heat energy because now if we say it on the law of thermodynamics when you say that the heat that was lost was equals to the heat that was uh, gained no? but then now we can say it, the heat that was lost um, is equals to the heat that was gained uh, plus the heat that we added uh, that came from uh, the compressor no? but then we're no longer we're not using a uh, qq but then we're using only H, which is the enthalpy. So, so this enthalpy, we're talking about the enthalpy of evaporation, which is going to be HF no? at this point here on, 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 on your evaporator, right? And then, um, okay, it's going to be HF. So then we can then now conclude that uh, if we want to, to compress from one to two, let's say uh, from one to two, or two to three and so on so we're going to use uh, the formula say to h number two would be equals to h number three plus uh, cp uh, into uh, t3 minus t2 yeah. so this formula came from uh, this one is the heat energy that we already had uh, equals to the heat energy that we gained plus the heat energy that we added so this heat energy that we added is going to be uh, we know the heat energy it's always equals to heat energy from n2 n3 it's the mass multiplied by the specific heat capacity multiplied by the change in temperature so we're still using the same concept now so but then our mass is kept constant because there are refrigerating agent that is circulating and this point has the very same mass now and then uh, this uh, mass is constant we can then cancel it which is this one from this point we can then say it's maybe it's one and then the specific heat capacity is our specific capacity of pressure and then the change in temperature is this one this is the heat energy that we added plus the heat energy that we gained would be equal to the one that we have it. so we can then say uh, if we want to calculate the heat energy from this point it's going to be this enthalpy number two uh, will be equal to number three plus uh, h number three uh, here it's going to be uh, two and three this is the change in temperatures uh, at this point All right so uh, and then uh, from this point now you know we have to uh, be careful from this one so if we are going here is that this one is undergoing uh, what you call refrigeration or refrigerator uh, yeah it's undergoing refrigeration or is under refrigeration so therefore from this point we're going to subtract the heat energy because now uh, at this point we wanted to lower the temperature of that uh, body that we added into the heat energy i don't know if uh if uh, people uh, uh, will understand this one but then we we'll do the second video to do um the calculation uh then the calculation will be yeah uh, we'll take uh maybe we will take uh examples from the question papers or example from the test book and then we'll do uh, like three or four of them and then we do exercises or question papers as, uh. so here now uh, on, on on number five right on uh, enthalpy number five we're going to say that it's equals to uh, enthalpy number four now we're going to subtract cp uh, with uh, enthalpy number four four and five yeah it's going to be four minus t five so because of this one is under refrigeration this one right it's losing the heat energy okay and then again we have our uh, entropy so uh under entropy now you know that, that this one 
so this one will contain the very same temperature because from uh if we have uh, enthalpy number one then we have enthalpy number two and then we have if we have five then six is the same as five remember our main focus is on number one and six and two and one so this is the main um this is our main concentration therefore we need to get the values of h1 and h number six so h number six would be the same as h number five by looking at what by looking at this enthalpy diagram from five and six is the same and then to get uh the entropies so uh there are a lot of formula to calculate entropy but then we can then uh, take one from our uh, table here so our entropy this is the formula to calculate entropy but then if we say that we keep the uh, pressure constant or oh, sorry we keep the volume constant that means this one is one and we know that lean one is zero so lean one if it's zero that means it's cancel out the whole thing then we remain with these two and then we say that the uh, vol uh, the mass is also one because it's kept constant throughout. So we can then uh, put one here. But then if you're given another mass, we can then multiply by the mass. And then now we know that the change change is equals to change is two entropy number two minus entropy number one. This is the change in entropy, which is equals to we can then now use this formula here. Uh, not this one um, we can then you come to this formula right so we can then conclude that we're going to use that cp uh, the specific capacity into uh, sorry so we can say uh, s2 minus s1 it's equals to uh, cp multiplied by lean uh, t2 over t1 so then we can now say it, uh, entropy number two will be equal to entropy number one uh, cos, um, okay, it's going to be plus, no? If this one comes to side, it's going to be plus, then lean into T2 over T1, right? Then from here, now we know that this is the, this is the same uh, process. But then when we're looking at our, um, our entropy, uh, our temperature entropy diagram from one and two, the entropy is the same or it's kept constant. That means entropy number one and two are the same. So there's no need for this formula. But then from this point to this one, now the entropy uh, is, is changing. That means we can then say that this one is number three, this one is number two. And then we can change our temperatures and then say this is temperature number three this is temperature number two i don't know if it's uh, the same yeah so this is what it's happening here so this is temperature number three or oh, entropy number three entropy number two plus lean then uh, this one so uh i don't want to do the videos to be more than uh 20 minutes actually uh, because um uh, People can uh, listen for a video that is uh, longer than 10 minutes on YouTube. But then um, this is what is happening or this is the concept of refrigeration. And then from there we can then uh, calculate them. So your refrigerate, uh, your enthalpy, sorry, your, what you call your, your entropies. This entropies can help you to get a CP if you are not given so that we'll be able to use your CP at this uh, form in this formula and then also uh, you have to keep in mind that uh, your refrigeration agent is kept constant which that's why it's using the law of iso uh, tropical uh, process which is the volume is also kept constant then um, okay let's see uh, on the second video uh, of this one and then we'll be doing the uh, we're doing uh, examples.